What's good, everybody? It's your boy Santo G, man. Back at it with another chapter, man. Fresh out of work. I just wanted to touch bases with you guys, man, and drop another chapter. So now I already talked about when I signed for the 10 years, and a couple months later, I went to the county. I went to the county in January of 2010. So Pretty much, I get to the county, and I get processed, all that. I'm in Men's Central, I gotta say, for like a couple of days, and it's a trip. The first cell that I actually get sent to, I'm right there. It's me, a homie from 38, and it's two Morenos. One of them, I remember, was from 40s, and the other one was from Inglewood Pimp Gang. IPG, and it's the first time I ever heard of them, and when I first walked in there, and I introduced myself to everyone, so I meet everyone, and then this dude introduces himself to me, you know, he's from Inglewood Pimp Gang, and they used to call him Poppy, P-A-P-I, Poppy, Poppy from IPG, you know me, and we get to talking, and next thing you know, he tells me that he's there for my homeboy's murder. My homeboy, Heaven, had just got killed in uh, 2009, and fast forward a couple months later, like I said, this was January of 2010, I'm in a cell with a Moreno that's there for murdering my homie, and coming from the halls, I had to really contain myself. The homie had to hold me back. When he started telling me this story, I hopped up on him like, what? And I was about to flight him. And the homie from 38 grabbed me and he held me back. He was like, hey, homie, chill. Like, you know what I mean? He's just telling you because he has to live with you. But we don't get down like that. You know what I mean? Uh, you do this, you're going to cause something racial. It's going to lead to something bigger. So I end up going to the day room. We had day room, I believe this was in the morning, so we would have day room in the morning or, or showers or whatever, and then in the night, we would have yard, so my first chance to pretty much get at any of the homies was at day room, so we go to day room, and pretty much the homie takes me to whoever's in charge right there, you know, and I'm right there telling them, like, hey, G, like, check this out, like, I'm new to all this, but I just landed in this cell, and homeboy's saying that he's here for my homeboy's murder, like, you know what I mean? So, pretty much, he had to talk to me, like, look, G, like, I understand you're coming from the halls, you're young, but that's not the get down right here, you know what I'm saying? So, pretty much, I couldn't do nothing about it. I had to learn to live with this individual, you know, and... I was only there like three, four days, and then they sent me to Supermax. That's where I ended up with my homeboy Chino, and pretty much right there was a dorm setting, and pretty much you just got to learn. Like I said, it's pretty much segregated. You can still talk to each other, but it's just segregated, you know? We have our own tables. They have their own tables. We have our own phones. They have their own phones. They have their own bathrooms. We have our own bathrooms, and... When it comes to, as far as the morning, like I said, you got to learn to clean up because they rotate it. Every certain bunk has certain cleanup duties, you know, and it just goes on and on and on until it comes back to you. You might have to clean up like two, three times out of the week, you know, help sweeping the tier or uh, whatever they assign you to do, you know, wipe down the phones, wipe down the tables, whatever, but... Now you got to learn how to pretty much live with all these individuals. And like I said, when it comes to the county and prison, it's pretty much respectful. Like everyone's respectful. They're nine times out of 10, someone's going to come at you respectful versus come at you foul or out of pocket sideways. Um, more than likely it's going to be homies, bumpy heads with homies or, um, Blacks bumpy head with blacks or whites with whites with their own race before they bump heads with anybody else and it creates something racial. 
just to give you guys a little understanding of how everything works, you know? So pretty much I'm in the county from January 2010 till March. I ended up catching the chain to go upstate in March. And I ended up going to Chino. And I'm on the bus going to Chino. And as soon as I get off the bus, and this is right hand of God. As soon as I get off the bus and I'm going into the intake area, I guess the homies were in Madrone. Um, for those, if you guys are in Madrone, you guys are pretty much facing intake. You see everyone that's coming. And I'm getting off the bus and I'm walking in. And then I don't know where I hear, hey, my boy. Santo, I love you, dog. I love you. This shaggy AK locals. Like, what? It was my fucking Sally from Silmar, you know? And he had took the deal for 22 years. And I hadn't seen him in like probably like seven to eight months. You know, he had went to YA and I stood fighting my case. And then I went to the county, I guess, from YA. They sent him to Chino. Chino at that time in 2010. It was the reception for pretty much people coming from YA or from juvenile hall. That's where they would send you to reception to classify you. So I'm getting off the bus and I hear my homeboy Shaggy from AK Locals pretty much yelling. And then I hear the homie Nessio from Two Time Locals. And uh, I believe in YA, he ended up getting put onto Sanfed. I guess it's a tagging crew, Two Time Locals. They're out in uh, San Fernando Valley. But I guess when he went to YA, he became from Sanford because I ended up running into him when we went to medical and he told me he was banging Sanford. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to all, you know what I mean? Everyone in the Valley and my boys from AK, you know? But yeah, man, uh, my first day getting off the bus and I hear this, you know, I hear the homies yelling. So I'm not going to lie. It took a lot of like my nerves, you know, my nervousness. And, of course, scared, you know, it's like first time going to prison, you know, and you're young. So a lot of the nerves that I had and a lot of the little like fear, it pretty much kind of like eased it off a little bit because I'm like, all right, cool. I know I'm not alone. You know, I'm barely getting off the bus and I already hear a gang of homies, you know, like so it felt good to be embraced. You know what I'm saying? And to know that there was people there along on the ride with me, you know, so. Chino, <clears throat> I gotta say, Chino, as far as workouts, Chino was rough. You had, because it was a uh, reception, but we were pretty much locked in our cells pretty much 24-7. They self-fed us and everything. The only times we would walk is to go to yard, like once a week. That's about it. It would be like on a Saturday or Sunday, you know? But, so Chino, they pretty much, they had a morning schedule of a workout. You would work out, I think, like around like 8 or 9. And the second shift was like around 12 in the afternoon. So it was you and Yoseli. Either you worked out early and Yoseli worked out later or vice versa, you know. And Chino, I got to say, those workouts were were rough. It, we, we had a letter of the alphabet for every workout, you know. I, I believe it went all the way up into M and N. Or M. I believe it went up to M. So let's just say one of the workouts would be, okay, you're starting off, right? So it will consist of 50 cherry pickers. Say workout A. First exercise, 50 cherry pickers. So you'll be in your cell and everyone's doing the workout, right? The next one would be like 20 one-count burpees, right? So you'll do 20 one-count burpees and... Right there, the walls are thin, you know, so you could hear on top. Like if somebody's getting busy and working out, you could hear. They know when somebody's not working out. You know what I'm saying? If you got nosy ass neighbors and shit, you're going to get told on. You know what I'm saying? So pretty much you had to know the alphabet, all the list. You had to have a copy of it so that way you know what's next because they would, out of nowhere, just call on random sales. You know what I mean? Say we'll be five five 
five um five little sets into the workout. So you know the fifth one is gonna say it's gonna be 50 Navy SEALs or 20 Navy SEALs, right? So they're gonna call on you. Say you're in cell 113, right? Say, all right, so they'll be like, excuse me on the tier, excuse me on the tier. Cell 113, can you please be so kindly to address us with the next ejercicio on the list, please? And you have to yell out, Spence on la tira, Spence on la tira. Homies, sureños, camaradas, the next exercise on the rutina is 20 Navy SEALs. That's 20 Navy SEALs, right? So if you got it right, it's like, okay, gracias. And then everyone will start doing the workout, you know? And if you got it wrong, someone would correct you. And then you would get broken off 1,300 burpees after the workout, after the whole workout. So it was like you had to be on your P's and Q's, you know? If you thought you was going to slide and slack and not work out, and you know, you thought otherwise. Because if they choose on you and you don't know the workout, you don't know the next routine, then you're fucked, you know? You get broken off. And, you know, only... Like I said, certain amount of times that you get broken up before you get either hands on or you got to go on a mission or something. So I got to say, um, that was pretty rough, but it kept everyone fit. You know, um, a lot of people think that upstate in prison, it's a mandatory workout. And to be honest, it's not a lot of prisons. You don't have to work out. It's not mandatory to work out. It's only in county. And in reception centers, that is mandatory you work out. And why? I don't know. Like I said, I don't make the rules. I just followed them. And if I was in a position, I enforced them. That's about it. But the workouts were pretty rough. And let me just say, like, letter A, and I'm going to give you guys an example, right? I know I've been having the homie tap in with me, and uh, he wanted me to give him a list. And to be honest... I wanted to just have the my primo come over and I explain it to you guys and then I buzz down, you know? But since I'm right here talking about my story, I just want to give you guys an example, right? So the first list will be 50 squats. You'll start off with 50 squats. So it'll be 50 squats. The next routine would be 50 cherry pickers. 50 squats, 50 cherry pickers. And then the third one would be, okay, you'll do 20 push-ups. Okay, 50 squats, 50 cherry pickers, 50 pu uh, 20 push-ups, right? After the 20 push-ups, that's just a warm-up. After the 20 push-ups, you're going to do another 50 jumping jacks. Just getting your blood pumping, right? After the 50 jumping jacks, you're going to do 20 eight count burpees so that's 20 eight count burpees that's a burpee with one push-up right so you're gonna do 20 burpees right after the 20 burpees you're gonna do 50 kickouts right you're gonna do 50 kickouts right after the 50 kickouts you're gonna do 20 navy seals after the 20 navy seals you're gonna do 20 aztecas after the 20 Aztecas, you're going to do 50 squats, right? After the 50 squats, you're going to do another 20 8-count burpees, right? You're going to do the 20 8-count burpees. After the 20 8-count burpees, you're going to do 50 cherry pickers, 50 cherry pickers. After the 50 cherry pickers, you're going to do another 20 Navy SEALs. After the 20 Navy SEALs, you're going to do like some hands, you know, some windmills, windmill. Pull down, you know, catch a little breath, catch a little breath, right? Then you're going to do what I just repeated again. And that's going to be one workout. That's just an example. You know what I'm saying? So think about how many burpees you're doing, you know? You're doing at least two, three hundred burpees, you know? So that's just one workout. And from somebody that's coming from like the county, say you didn't fight your case for that long or something like that, 
then you're not really in shape. You know, it's going to take you a couple of weeks to actually be able to do one whole workout. You know, even me right now, I've been out, say, two years. It's going to take me some time to do a workout like that, you know, which is why I want to get in shape before I have my cousin come over and then I do the workout. I don't want to fucking look stupid all out of breath, you know, just being real. But yeah, man, so that was reception, you know, pretty much woke up, worked out, bird bath and all that, then boom, Sally works out, eat bird baths and all that, eat, read a book. Reception was a lot of reading books, man, reading books writing letters and stuff like that, you know? And like I said, um, my first time in reception, uh, I didn't have a family and stuff like that. So it was pretty much me just wilding, you know? So I got to say um, reception is hard because you don't have that communication versus the county you're on the phone all day. Reception is now you're writing letters. In 2010, we didn't have a phone call every month, you know? Now you're just writing letters, you're writing letters, you're writing letters, you know? And from reception, I was there in Chino, I want to say like four or five months. And from there, I got sent to Wasco. And then from Wasco, I was there a couple of weeks. And then I got sent out of state to Arizona. In Arizona, it was pretty much, I wanted to say like if I was back in juvenile hall, um, the COs out there weren't real COs. They were like free step, you know? So like I said, I felt like I was back in juvenile hall. And it was pretty much fun, you know? They had cable TV. You were able to get a, a Xbox, a PlayStation. You know what I mean? Uh, they showed love out there. You know what I mean? And out there was crazy as far as just crazy. Huh. I got a lot of stories. Um, I already talked about the riot that I was in out there in 2014. So I'll talk about that a little bit more later. You know, right now I'm barely getting to Arizona. So I get to Arizona. I'm pretty much barely establishing everything. And um, <clears throat> pretty much just learning the ropes. And then we end up Getting into it with the staff out there. Um, the homies ended up doing a holiday. They ended up doing a mission on the yard. Pretty much packing somebody out. And these huras, what they did is out there, they have pepper spray and they have, uh, um, they have paintball guns. So what they did is they just kept shooting the homies and just spraying, you know, and they didn't want to come extract the homies. And it was just a big old chaos. And they ended up throwing gas in all of us. Like, they gassed the whole yard. Yard went down. Homies were throwing bombs back at them. You know what I mean? Uh, and that ended up happening in Arizona. And when we were on lockdown for that, they ended up sending me to Oklahoma. And when I first got to Oklahoma, we were on lockdown as well because... Uh, I believe that's when there was the friction between the South and the North, when they were housing uh, Norteños and homies out of state. For those of you who are from up North and you guys know what I'm talking about, not me, salute you guys. I don't know if you guys remember, for a minute, they had Northerners in Oklahoma and they had Northerners in Arizona, but for a minute... All the Northerners from Oklahoma got sent back to Arizona. So for the Northerners that were out of state, they were pretty much housed in Arizona now. And the homies had Oklahoma and Mississippi. So I got to Oklahoma when they were doing that transition. So I got to say, even though people were saying that it was on site and stuff like that, like as far as the prison officials saying that it was on site with us, we were in the same building together still, but we were on lockdown and they were not. And I got to say, for the time that they, we were there, they always came to the cell and they always came and asked us like, what's up? Are you guys good? Do you need anything? You need me to pass anything to anybody? And they had ice machines in the building. So they'll be like, do you guys need any ice? Or if you needed like, say some rechargeable batteries charged and 
you didn't have a plug, they'll plug them for you outside. So it was still respectful, cordial, and they showed love, you know, because they were out of lockdown and we were on lockdown. And it's not like if you can't receive a care package from them either, you know. In situations like that where we're on lockdown, we ain't got nothing coming and stuff like that. If they wanted to shoot, say they wanted to shoot some coffee or they wanted to shoot some sopas, as long as it was a closed object, like a brand new jar or a brand new sopa and stuff like that, you could take it. You know what I'm saying? And salute. You know what I mean? Much love and much respect to all my northerners that were there in Oklahoma at that time. I got there in September of 2010, you know? So salute anyone that was there around that time, man, because y'all did come to the cell doors and all that and did ask if we needed anything, passed shit around, whatever, you know what I mean? But yeah, just wanted to touch on that. I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. I hope I didn't bore y'all, but your boy Santo G, man, getting a little bit more into the story and into the story. Like I said, you guys want me to touch on anything specific, just holla at me, you know what I mean? My boy, I hope that workout is a good little workout for you, you know what I mean? Try it out. Like I said, I'm going to get more in depth with it, but I'm just waiting to have somebody come and help me to do a film, all right? Boy, Santo G, you guys always have a good one, man. Keep it respectful, keep it cordial, and remember, man, it don't matter what color you are, it don't matter where you're from, you know what I mean? We all bleed the same, you know what I'm saying? We all hurt the same, and we all humans. Boy, Santo G, man, unity, prosperity, and respect, man. Let's get it.